Thank you for joining me in this week's episode of Jason Stewart Photography. This week, what we're going to be looking at is, well, wait a second. Before we go any further, I'm going to need you to back up. You really are invading my space right now, and it's kind of awkward for me. No, seriously, please, you got to back up. I really need some space here. This is much better, isn't it? I just need a little more space between us. It was getting a bit awkward. And I'm sure you can appreciate having a little space between us as well, can't you? And you know, most people need space in life. And what we're going to find out in this week's episode is that it is no different with the subjects in our photographs. The subjects in our photographs need space as well. And that's what this week is all about. We are going to learn about the compositional method known as the rule of space. We're going to talk about why the rule of space is important in photography and how to apply the rule of space when we're taking photos. The rule of space is a compositional method that reminds us we must give our subject space to either look or move within the image. Meaning, if our subject is looking or moving in a certain direction, We've got to leave enough space for them to look and move so that the picture looks natural and not crowded or cluttered. Because when that happens, it's displeasing to the eyes. For example, this image of a surfer at the beach. You can see that I purposely cropped this image in order to emphasize what I'm trying to get across. If the actual image would have turned out like this, it would have been a terrible shot. You see, we've got the surfer in focus but he's running out to catch a wave with the beautiful pink and purple colors glistening off the waters behind him. And there's even a beautiful sailboat in the horizon. However, again, if this was the final word on this image, and even though everything appears to be correct as far as exposure and story, it's ruined because I've ignored the compositional method that we're talking about today, which is the rule of space. This particular version of this image is absolutely ruined because it feels cluttered, and to be honest, it's kind of stressful for me to even look at. Is this surfer going to run into a wall? I have no idea what's right in front of him because the rule of space was not applied. However, when you look at the image that I really captured, it's an entirely different story. Everything is working now. The surfer has plenty of room to run as he heads out into the surf. You can see the other surfers out in the water as well that he's running out to. And it looks like another beautiful day in sunny Southern California. As you can see, this image has dramatically improved and there is a nice balance to the photograph. Looking at this next image of my wife, Lindsay, I captured this image while we were in Yellowstone Park. Now I purposely placed her to the right of this image using the rule of thirds and I have her looking out into the distance. And because there is a lot of space in front of her, my eyes naturally want to observe this entire landscape. This is how you apply the rule of space. I have a main subject, which is my wife in the image. I've applied the rule of thirds, which we looked at in last week's episode. And my subject is looking out at the horizon, looking at the beautiful forest of the Yellowstone National Park, as well as the beautiful snow-capped mountain range in the distance, and the beautiful cloud formation in the sky. There is a lot for my eyes to look at. I won't just look at this picture, see the subject, and move on. I, I want to examine this particular image. Now, what about portraits of people or animals? Well, the rule of space applies to this as well. Similar to the image we just looked at of my wife, if you're taking portraits of people, or animals, you want to apply the rule of space as well when they're not looking directly at the camera. If you have a subject that's looking off to the side, you want to create some space. It's just like you see here in the camera. You see, I have some space that I'm looking out to. Now, if I was over here uh, looking out in the space, it, it would be a bit awkward because you can't really see what I'm looking at. And so uh, you want to remember that if you're taking images, uh, portrait images of people or animals, you want to you wanna create space if they are not looking directly at the camera. Let me show you what I mean. This image here is a picture of my wife, Lindsay, when we were in Seattle. And as you can see, she's not looking directly at the camera. She has plenty of space in front of her 
to continue looking out. And because of this, the image looks very natural and balanced. This is an important concept to remember when you're doing portrait work. Again, if the subject is not looking directly at the camera, whether it's a person or an animal, then you will want to leave enough space for the subject to look into or look out at. And the reason for this is because this technique creates an interest in the minds of the viewers, causing them to want to look at the rest of the image. Look at this image I captured of a white wolf. You can see that I applied this concept to the wolf. And because of this, there's a bit of a mystery to this wolf. Is he on the hunt right now? Is he about to go on the attack? Because there is space in front of this wolf, it allows our imagination to run free. If you're taking pictures of moving objects, like people playing sports or animals running, or maybe an automobile driving past, you wanna make sure you apply the rule of thirds so that you can create enough space and give the subject of your image room to move, a direction to head into. And the reason that this is important is because it helps not cram or clutter up your image and it builds action into the photograph you're taking. Let me show you some examples of this. Okay, here's a simple image. You can see it. There's a beautiful sunset at the beach and you've got a lady walking her dog. I purposely cropped this image so that the rule of space is being broken. And because I've done this, the image looks really unbalanced and cluttered and I really don't want to look at it anymore. However, in this second image, we see the lady walking her dog on the beach where I've applied the rule of thirds. She's on the far right side of the image. There's a beautiful sunset and she and her dog have plenty of room to move forward in this image and it makes my eyes want to study more of this picture. In fact, now that we have applied the rule of space, we can also see as we study this image closer, there are even a couple of surfers out in the water. This same technique should be applied in sports as well. As you can see, here is a picture of two soccer players running after the ball. Now, in this image, we've got the rule of space. We've got the ball on the left side of the image and we've got the two soccer players running full force after that ball fighting for it. It's just a well-balanced action shot. The soccer players have room to move and my eyes wanna study this image for a while. Here's another image of two more soccer players. This time it's two girls. We see that one girl has jumped up in the air and kicked the ball and there's room in front of her and so we see the ball going away from her and this image just conveys action and it makes me wanna study it more. In this next image here of my little boy, this was taken a few years ago when we were at Mammoth Lake, but as you can see, he's crossing over a little stream and because I've applied the rule of space, we can see that there are rocks in front of him and our imagination can lead us to begin wondering which rocks will he step on in order to cross over this little stream. But because the rule of space is there, we can see the little stream running down from the lake and we can see my son trying to calculate how to cross over. In this image here of a pelican down at La Jolla Shores, because I've applied the rule of space here, this pelican has plenty of room to fly forward. And because it has so much room, our eyes are naturally attracted to the beautiful blues that are behind it and in front of it. We can see that there is a wave that is formed and about to crash, and we can also see the horizon line further back in the picture. It's just a beautiful composition that was made possible because I applied the rule of space. Let's look at this image here. Here's a perfect example of how you can capture wildlife in a landscape and apply the rule of space. We've got a beautiful elk laying down on the riverbed in Yellowstone and the elk is looking to the left and there's plenty of room in front of the elk for our eyes to wander, to look out at the water and the river, to look at the bushes across the river, to look at the trees and the beautiful clouds. But the rule of space makes this image happen. And finally, for our last picture, here is one more image of my wife that I took of her, it's a portrait. But you can see as she's looking off into the distance, 
I've given her plenty of space by applying the rule of space as well as the rule of thirds. There is a lot that we can look at in front of my wife, the beautiful colors of the uh, Pacific Northwest as this is where this image was taken, but there's just plenty of room for our eyes to wander and to uh, really uh, use our imagination with. In this episode, we've learned about the compositional method known as the rule of space. The rule of space is simply adding space in front of the direction that your subject is either moving or looking in. And by doing this, it will be much more visually appealing for your viewers to look at your pictures and you'll create more beautiful images on a much more consistent basis. Well, hey, before you go, I want to once again just thank you for watching this week's episode. And also, if you liked this episode and you found this helpful, can you do me a big favor by hitting the like button and the subscribe button? This lets YouTube know that you like this content and you want to see more of it. And it also gets my channel out to a broader audience. Well, again, thank you so much for checking this week's video out. And I hope you have a great week. Now go out and capture the world.